Hello everyone and welcome to my coloring corner. Uh, today is Try It Tuesday and as you see we have a set of pencils here and an empty swatch. Um, I have been asked several times what my process is uh, going through and let's brighten this up a little bit here. There we go, that's better. What my process is in putting colored pencils into color order, uh, well, into my color order, uh, as well as getting the swatch ready. So this set of pencils is everywhere. They are higgly piggly everywhere. So normally what I do first, I'm going to switch you over to the close-up camera. Um, the first thing I do is I take a sheet of paper, I flip it over, um, from the swatch chart. I do it on the same piece of paper that way no paper is wasted and I go through and I swatch the pencils on here. Now the white of course is not going to show. I'm going to make sure I don't knock this tray of pencils over. So of course the white isn't going to show so we're going to leave that in the first spot. But I'm going to put down that color so that when I go through and go, okay, this one here is not where I want it to be. This one here is not where I want it to be. I can move them around. These pencils do not have any sort of discerning marks on them. Uh, so because of that, I'm not... I. I have to make sure I keep them in the exact order that they are in the tray so that uh, when I go through and change them around I can easily change them around in the tray. Now this is probably the most boring video that you'll ever see but people wanted to see the process so here's the process uh, this doing a swatch chart uh, with a set of pencils that has no um, cohesion to their layout in the trays can be daunting um, this is only a 72 set, so I, I chose one of the smaller sets that I got for my birthday. And they are, it is so daunting that I haven't, um, I haven't had the time or the patience to go through them all and do this with them. I have a set that uh, a friend of mine in New Zealand gave me uh, that's 200 pencils. Luckily, that one has names and numbers on them, so they're e or at least numbers, uh, so they're easily figured out on the front of the swatch chart. I can do a small, uh, small square swatch chart, a, a 520 swatch chart, and move them around, re-swatch and whatnot on that chart with the numbers so that I have a better idea of what I have. Now this way, like I said, it can be time consuming and quite daunting. So if you uh, are watching and uh, find that this part is a little boring, um, what I will do is I will increase the speed of this video. Uh, well, I'll, I'll do a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I will do the, uh, the, the video magic and uh, increase the speed of the 
putting down the colors and then um, once that is done we will come back through and put them in another order and then the the fun part is is that then we get to swatch them all over again so in during that swatch process I will also increase the speed for you <laughs> so that uh, you're not having to sit here and listen to me ramble while I'm trying to uh, get all these pencils swatched so I will be right back uh, as soon as I get these all on the paper Okay, so now that that's done, uh, we've got all the colors in the entire set down on a piece of paper. Now we can start going through and start putting the pencils in color order. So we're going to move this over here a little bit. And we're going to take our paper and we're going to lay our pencils down across the area that the color is and then we'll be able to shift them around to go from light to dark like so and the reason why I'm doing this um, is so that I have room in the swatch itself or in the container itself to put the colors back in so for example I want this one and then this one oh. and then this one and then I want this one and then we want to take this one out and put it in here like this and basically I'm just making room for the shift and once we we have the shift done then we'll do another swatch on the other side of the pencils once they've been shifted. And then we'll do any further shifting that is required and then we will number them and do the full swatch. So now I want to put this one here and then this one. I want those two brown colors in the brown, so those will go down further. So now we're going to start in with the oranges. So we need our peach tone here. And this is a darker peach tone there. This one goes there. Now that orange is going to go there. That's another brown tone that I want to move into the browns. This is a, a brighter orange, so it goes there. And then we have a red there. So the next one will be this one, actually. Hmm because it's more of a peachy tone, so let's put it there. Like I said, we will go through this again, this whole process, uh, over again and put them in 
and you know rearrange to accommodate the different changes um, that we want to make. So I'm just going to put these ones down here because the pinks aren't, we're not ready for the pinks yet. There's some reds that are mixed in to this. This one. So as you can probably see, I'm just matching up as I as I go along here. So I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom here with the color matchup. Trying to make sure that they're all on their own color so that we don't get any any conflict. And this is the tedious part. Uh, this part is where a lot of people get uh, frustrated. And I gotta check that. I think I just messed those up. Yeah, I did. So that one goes there, that one goes there. Because th of that situation uh, where you put down a pencil in the wrong place and it gets shifted around. So the next one I want is this one is the next one and then this one and then this one and then this one And then this one. Now this one here is more of a purpley red, so I might put it with the red violets with this one here. And then change my mind later because it bugs me. <laughs> now we're going to start on our pinks. So we're going to put our pink in there. Now the next one is this one here. Now this one here is a bit of an orangey. Let's see. Yes. It's a dark pink. But it's more of an orangey dark pink. So this one goes there, this one goes there. Yeah, this one, and then we'll do the orangey dark pink, and then this one, and then we'll get into the purple pink. Okay, and those are our golds, browns, and red colors. So let's leave those there. Now we're going to place these ones. because the purples that we want are in the next area and then we'll be going into the blues but first we need to put our blue pencils on our blue areas here now normally what I would do the the reason for this process is because of the, the video. Now you can also do this with a smaller line and rearrange them without uh, without doing a whole lot of the covering up of things by putting them in a pencil holder or in a different box, that sort of thing. So down here is where our purples are. 
and it's quite far down. So what we can do is we can verify that there's a couple of blues that need to go into the blues. So we're going to pull out, hmm, I want to do this, but I don't want to mess it up too bad. <laughs> so, yeah, let's do it this way. Because I've got a, so those are the blues. So let's put the blues in some form of order here. And we'll put them into a thing here. I think this one here is next. And this one. And this one. And this one. And then this one. And this one. And then this one. And that one is the start of the green. All right, so now we're going to put down these ones. Move this over so I can see them. So that one is a bit of a blue-green, so that will... I have to remember that. Now, normally, um, I could sometimes I can do this in the tin and just go picking through and count each individual pencil but uh, this guarantees that I have it in the right order for what I have in the tin and it gives me the ability to move things around um, within the tin because the tin doesn't have a lot of space and sometimes you can lose count and end up having to redo it. There are some pencil brands that you can just do it by eye um, without... Ooh, this one here needs to be in the red. So let's move those over. And this is why I, I try to make sure I have enough room in the set. In the, in the tin to move things around. So this one here is lighter than this one. So it can go there. And this is that other purple red that goes with this one here. And I'm looking at them, and I may end up putting those in the reds or in the browns, in the red brown areas like the mahoganies. I don't know why I'm looking for a number. <laughs> but as you can see, it can be a very tedious process to put all of the colors in their order. Now you could go through and say pull all the browns, put the browns in order. There are several different ways that you can do this. Uh, this is the best way for me to show you how I do it. Because sometimes, like with these, 
the barrel color is very deceptive of what color is actually in the pencil. The Even the reds in that are quite dark. So you could easily confuse them like these ones here on the end here. They're all very, very dark colored, almost black colored. So you could easily confuse those with the blacks and the grays instead of the browns, which is what they are part of is the browns. All right, so now we're getting into the purples here. So that's a blue violet. That's a little bit more of a violet violet. And then we have a gray in the middle there. All right, so here's a very light pinky purple, so that one can go there. This is more of a blue, so we'll leave it there for now. This is a pinky purple. That one's a blue. All right. Now, now that we've started getting into those areas, we can start putting some of the greens back in here and we'll take them back out once we get the violets dealt with here. Because there's some that are more red than violet or more brown than red, that sort of thing. All right, so we've got a blue here, which we'll have to deal with. Um, no, that one goes down here. I was gonna say, that's the wrong blue for that. So there's the blue for that. And then we've got a red tone here that um, is way more red. Yeah, we can put that in with the red browns. All right, the next one is, okay, so that one. goes over to that one goes there and this one goes here and then we've got blue and black all right so the next colors that we're going to be using or putting in are the blues so we're going to put this one here like this this one here like that and this one ah! This one here, uh, yeah, on my chest. So now we're going to get into our blues here. So we need our lightest blue, which would be this one. And then... I think we already sorted these out, so pretty sure that we just put these all in here this way. But then we've got a couple of dark blues up here and down there. So, oh, I've still got some purples here. What am I doing? All right, let's put these back. See, this is why I do it this way, because <laughs> otherwise I mess up and uh, don't pay attention to what I'm doing. So these two purples go in. So we've done the red violets. Now we're getting into the blue purples, which are the more of the blue violet colors. And there we go. So that's the purples. That's better. See, it's a good thing I did it this way so that I could actually see what I'm doing. Do we have any more 
purples other than that red one there. Those are blues. Okay. So now we're going to start with the lightest blue. There, let's see the difference between this one and that one. So this one is lighter. Actually, this one's lighter than that one. Get in the slot. All right, now we're going to move the greens down. blues to put in to move. I'll move it down a few and then we can readjust. And if you do put them in something, this is the best way to sort them out where you're able to test them against each other and get that gradients on a sheet so that you can see what it is. All right, now for our greens, we want we want our aquatic greens first, so we need that one, number two, which is this one, and it's just a dark green, and number three. Think. Yeah, that's an aquatic color too. So we're going to put the blue green first, the dark one, which is more blue than green. And then we're going to move there. Okay. Now we're going to put in our light colors. So our lightest color is this one. Then we're going to move these down. So our next lightest color is this one. And then this one, I do believe. And this one. Um. Then this one, this one, this one. It's like pick up and pick up sticks. <laughs> and then this one. That one's black. No, oh, no, that isn't black. That isn't blue. How did I miss that blue? Fudge. <laughs> I have a dark blue here I missed. So now we go through and we just move everything over until we get to the point where we want this dark blue to be. And I know this is a process 
that you guys may not be enjoying at all <laughs> for the past 23 minutes. Are you bored yet? <laughs> all right, so now those are grays. Those are grays. So because we have the black in place at the end there, we can put the grays in place as well. So I put the darkest gray, the medium gray, the next lightest, the lightest. So those are our grays. Now all we have left is our browns. And we're going to start off with these two browns up here. So that's our lightest. Uh, this one here is more of a red brown, so we'll leave that there. And then this one, and then this one, and then this one, and this one. going to start into our red brown so we need this one that's much darker this one and then this one and then we have our dark browns so we're going to put the one that has the lightest in the dark browns and this one this one, this one, and then on the very end we're going to put the gold. There seems to be only one metallic in here and that's the gold. And I always put the metallics after the black um, and separate. So I'm going to bring this over so you can see the difference between the, the, the layout. So now what I will do is I will go through and re-swatch all of them on this chart, go through and make any changes that need to be made. And then on Friday, when you guys see the fun stuff Friday, all of that will be inputted into the computer onto a chart and fully swatched. And then I will of course go through the review. But that is the process that I go through every time I sort and swatch a set of pencils, especially a set of pencils that doesn't have any sort of markings on them or any sort of um, variation. Now what I will be doing uh, once I do get it all sorted out is I take these little tiny dots and they're just little sticker dots and I put them on the back of each of the pencils uh, with a number then I glue that on and once it's glued on then I can easily find what pencil goes where and that sort of thing when I put them away so that is uh, the process that I go through in order to do a swatch chart I do go through this process with other pencil sets as well, even though they are numbered and named. Sometimes they're not in the color order I prefer. A lot of times they come in rainbow order or no order at all. And rainbow order, order although it's fantastic, it's going from red to black. It's not an order that my brain automatically connects to. Um, so that's why I do from light to dark because I, I connect to that color arrangement better when I'm grabbing something than I do with the rainbow order. And, you know, one of my very first set of pencils, the uh, Faber-Castells, came in that order. So for, for some reason, my brain has automatically put all pencils in that order. <laughs> I don't know why. So I don't know if it's just to force a habit or what, but for some reason if the yellows aren't at the start of my of my pencil group, I tend to flounder. So 
I just put them in the order that my brain says to put them in and that's the order that they go in so all right guys thank you all very much for watching I hope this has been informative or at least a little entertaining on the insanity that I go through to create a pencil swatch and to, to review a set of pencils. I will be doing um, this review as well as several others on Friday. I am going to try to do one or two. With the colorathon uh, going on, it has taken a lot more of my time uh, than previously anticipated but I enjoy it and I'm in, I'm really enjoying all of the streams and trying to keep up with coloring all of the uh, the works in progress as people do them. I'm not doing a great job of that but I am trying. <laughs> uh, but yeah so I will definitely at least get the review for this set of pencils out on Friday and of course I will have a proper swatch done and all that fun stuff. All right, guys, with that, I would like to say thank you all very much for watching. I hope it has been at least a little bit of an insight of what my brain does with a set of pencils that are all higgly piggly everywhere. Until next time, always remember to relax, color, and stay safe. Until then, bye-bye for now.